What's going on guys? Chemist Nate coming to you live from Lamoureux Park in Scarborough, Ontario. My question for you is what's the difference between a lake like this and a lake covered with algae like this? The answer is that the lake covered with algae has undergone eutrophication. Eutrophication is an overgrowth of algae or cyanobacteria or phytoplankton, whatever it takes to cover a lake entirely with some kind of photosynthetic stuff. You know, plants. Nutrients have come from somewhere and have flooded into the lake. Farmers are fertilizing their fields, making sure all their crops grow, but then the rain comes and the rain washes the phosphorus and the nitrogen and the potassium and all the other stuff in the fertilizers back into the lake. And all the stuff plants need to grow dissolved in the water in the lake. So what happens? Plants grow inside the lake, like algae, cyanobacteria, and phytoplankton. They cover the entire lake. Large sheet of green goo. Large amounts of green goo covering the lake prevent light from getting into the lake, and that means that plants that are already on the bottom tend to die because they're not getting light. When these things decompose, they consume oxygen. And what you get is a state of hypoxia, which is not a lot of oxygen. And if it continues, you can get to anoxia, which is no oxygen at all dissolved inside the lake. If fish don't have oxygen to breathe, they will die. Just one nutrient, phosphorus, flowing into the lake can cause everything in the lake to die. There are a few different things that this eutrophication can cause in a lake. Number one, the lake doesn't look as pretty as it should. Number two, it can absolutely obliterate the fish and animal populations inside the lake because there's no oxygen dissolved inside of it. Number three, because some of the fish have disappeared, other species can come in and take over. Here's another problem. That green goo that forms might even be toxic itself. We've isolated like 12 or 15 different toxins from these kinds of bacteria and algae. Problem is, these toxins get into the water or fish eat the algae and then they get toxified. And then what if you eat the fish that ate the toxic algae? It's just a huge problem all around. We know that in lakes like this one, it's phosphorus that causes the problem. Because back in the day, in something called the Experimental Lakes area up in northern Ontario, they took a lake and literally divided it in half. They put up this barrier so that one half had normal conditions and the other half, they added phosphorus to it. The side that had the phosphorus added to it, huge amount of algae. The side that didn't have phosphorus added to it, perfectly normal like this one. Where are the nutrients for eutrophication coming from? Two categories. Point sources and non-point sources. Point sources are one place we know exactly where it's coming from, and it's actually pretty easy to find and eliminate those. Say, a chemical company just dumping fertilizer into the lake through one of their runoff pipes. All we have to do, plug the pipe, done. The worst problem is non-point sources, where you can't tell exactly where these nutrients are coming from. If you have two or three farmers' fields around, a, around the same lake, the farmers are all going to apply fertilizer. Each time it rains, the fertilizer gets washed away and you wash a little bit into the lake and then a little bit more and then a little bit more and some of the fertilizer can seep through the soil in the hills and then end up in the lake from the bottom. Nutrients can come from a whole bunch of different places if they're non-point sources. Who's going to take responsibility for that? Certainly not me. Long story short, too much algae equals bad. 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 We don't want that much algae in a lake. 